Well, good evening and welcome to St. Lawrence. Tonight we are celebrating the first Sunday in Advent. Our presider this evening is Father Michigan, assisted by Deacon Tim. Please rise and join in singing number 412, God of all people, number 412. <laughs> Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts that, so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, nor eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is based on Psalm 80.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. To you, Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you have ever seen the 1989 movie Back to the Future 2? Okay. Some of you have seen it. For the rest of you, I'm about to ruin part of it for you. I feel no remorse. You've had 30 years to watch it. Come on. So, in one part of that film, uh, the, the main character, Marty McFly, he time travels from 1985 all the way to the futuristic year of 2015. Uh, and while he's there, he buys a sports almanac that has the results of every major sporting event going back a century. And he thinks, well, if I have this book, when I go back home, uh, I can bet on the games and I can make a fortune. 
Only problem is, later on, he goes back to the 1950s, where the almanac falls into the hands of his nemesis, Biff Tanner. And so instead, Biff becomes a multimillionaire, and Marty's whole life is thrown into chaos because of it. Two different characters, one good, one bad, but both attempted to live their lives differently because they had sure knowledge of future events. They knew what was going to happen for sure, and they adjusted themselves accordingly. Wouldn't we all like to have that? If you had some sort of guidebook that could tell you with absolute certainty what's in your future, would you live differently? Probably. If you knew a certain plane was going to fall out of the sky, you'd probably, at a minimum, cancel your flight. If you knew that if you showed up at a certain place on a certain day, at a certain time, someone would hand you a check for a hundred million dollars, you wouldn't consult your calendar to see if you had anything more important going on. You'd move everything else around in order to get there and to receive that money. If you knew the future, you would act accordingly. Brothers and sisters, we enter today into the season of Advent, and part of that means we know the future. Advent is a misunderstood and often forgotten season. You know, our, our culture has already moved on, right? It's already Christmas around us. The music is on the radio, the decorations line the streets, the sales are on in the stores. And for the most part, fine, right? Like, it's, it's not a big deal. I mean, there's some things that are actually wonderful about our cultural celebration of Christmas. There's nothing wrong with participating in that. Some of it's all in good fun. There's a wonder and a magic to our culture's anticipation of Christmas. So you know, enjoy it. Don't get all self-righteous when your co-worker starts humming a Christmas tune and tell him to keep his falalas to himself, you know. We can participate in our culture's happy anticipation of Christmas, but, but, there is a danger for us. There is a danger for us as Catholics if we don't also engage in this season of Advent. And the big danger is this, because there's so much Christmas stuff already happening around us, we tend to start to think that the purpose of Advent, to the extent that it has one, is just to get ourselves ready for Christmas. Christmas is coming, let's count the days, let's go through the calendar, let's make sure we have everything ready. But the word Advent means coming. We are preparing for our annual celebration, remembering the Lord Jesus coming into the world as a baby in a manger, but that is only the secondary purpose of Advent. Its primary purpose is for us to prepare ourselves for his second coming. Jesus tells us in the gospel today that he will return. He's handing us the almanac that tells us the future. We're being given the final score before the game has even finished being played. We may not know what we'll face tomorrow. We may not know what we'll face next year. But we know how all of this ends. We know. Jesus has shown us. He's told us. He will return and take his rightful place as the Lord and King of all creation. And when he does, everything will change. 
all that's been wrong will be set right. Watch, therefore, says Jesus. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. We know what's going to happen. We know that Jesus is coming, and yet we spend so much of our lives sleepwalking from one thing to the next, not paying attention, not preparing ourselves for what we know is about to happen. We feel the pressure of Christmas coming acutely, right? We know that's coming. Only so many days left to buy gifts, only so much time left to wrap them and put the trees and the lights up and to make travel plans and to max out our credit cards and, you know, everything else that we have to do. We know that the day when we remember the Lord's first coming requires us to prepare. And yet we often forget that the day of the Lord's second coming also requires preparation. Jesus is on his way to set the world right. Have we prepared a place for him in our homes and in our hearts? Are we repenting of our sins and relying on his mercy? Or do we think that confession and repentance can wait for another day? Are we taking care of the things that have been given to us for stewardship? Our children, our, our planet, even our own bodies? Or are we always consuming and using, never conserving and building up? It's no accident that Advent is the first season of the liturgical year, because for us as Christians, every day is a kind of Advent. You know, we, we focus on this once a year, but this really, this is our lives all the time, or at least it should be. Every day is an opportunity to prepare your heart to become a fit dwelling place for the Lord. And there's no magic trick to it. There's no, you know, you don't have to have some kind of special knowledge to know what to do, right? How do you prepare? Go to Mass on Sunday. Good job, everybody here. Excellent work so far, right? Go to Mass on Sunday. Go to confession regularly. Pray every day. Read the Bible and the Catechism. These are the things that bring us closer to Jesus. These are the things that prepare us. And doing all of that, it's not going to make you a perfect person overnight, but it will keep you awake and aware of your relationship with God so that when the Lord comes, you will be ready. Advent is good news, friends. It's good news. It means that whatever terrible things are happening in the world, or even in your own life, all of that will be set right when Jesus returns. And so just as our preparation for Christmas is joyous, our anticipation of the Lord's return should also be joyous. And even those things that can make this time of year difficult for some of you, the heartaches and the loss, 
Advent says all of that will be made right when the Lord returns. All that's lost will be restored. All that's been broken will be made new. So prepare yourself and your family. Care for this world and the people who live in it. Ignore the naysayers who wring their hands and counsel despair. The Lord is coming, and you know it. You've been given the almanac. Live like you know how the story ends. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we sang in today's responsorial psalm, we turn our faces to God, asking the Lord to see our needs and the needs of all God's creation. That all members of the church may deepen their personal prayer in the coming weeks. We pray to the Lord. The Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are suffering because of wars in many parts of the world, especially for the people of Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. That we may resist materialism and commercialism during our preparation for Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That men and women suffering emotional distress may find the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, those listed in the book of the sick and their caregivers will know the healing hand of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that those who have died will rejoice forever in the house of the Lord, especially Jose Parra, husband of Betty Parra, Salvatore Riscato, husband of Maria Riscato, Lucille Caradine, mother of Susan Hargarther. We pray to the Lord. Lord to you. For our own intentions and the intentions of this Mass, the soul of Julian Yamato, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. 
Father, hear the prayers of the people you have gathered at this altar in faithful obedience to your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lawrence, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. As we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, let us join together in singing number 415, My Soul in Stillness Waits, number 415.
Our second communion hymn is number 420, Creator of the Stars of Night, number 420. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, 
For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, for any announcements, please see the bulletin. Thank you. That was the whole announcements? That's, that's impressive. They're longer at school, aren't they? That's right. They're longer at school, he says. Yes, they are. Um, well, I'll just add one for the, for the fun of it, because it occurs to me that I didn't actually introduce myself to you, so some of you are thinking right now, Father Jason, you look different. <laughs> um, so if you don't know me, I'm Father Jonathan Michikin. Uh, I am chaplain at St. John the 23rd High School in Katy, um, and it's, it's always a pleasure to be here at, at St. Lawrence. So thank you for allowing me to worship with you uh, this evening. <laughs> Yes, uh, there is one announcement, please. Oh. Um, be sure to check out the craft sale in the parish hall immediately following Mass. And check for Mass times for Christmas. No. Absolutely. You know. Go ahead, Matt. Jen. And please don't <laughs> The Feast of the Immaculate Conception, Conception is Friday, so Friday. check the bulletin for Mass times for the Vigil Mass on Thursday and the Mass times on Friday. Yes. <laughs> but she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they weren't here. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the glory of God by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And as we go forth this evening, let us join together in singing number 414, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 414. We'll do the verses 1 and 3. 